The entity finds many killers willing to serve him and hunt victims for him. Some are psychotic killers throughout the ages of time. Some are interdimensional monsters with animalistic instincts. Some are vengeful spirits and wraiths who think justice for wrongs done to them. And yet others... Others are beings of another realm beyond even the Entity's reach. Hell itself does not adhere to the Entity's whim, but its priest can be persuaded. Welcome back to the Fog, and in honor of this Halloween season, I'd like to break protocol here and talk about one of my favorite horror movie icons in Dead by Daylight. Only recently added to the roster as of the making of this video, today we're talking about the Cenobite better known as Pinhead. Yes, I am aware that Michael Myers or The Shape is a killer in Dead by Daylight and the franchise he's from is literally called Halloween, but between the two I always preferred Pinhead as a killer for reasons I'll get into later. I will inevitably talk about Michael at some point but we'll save him for another day. For now, let's tell the story of Hell's Priest. Hundreds of years ago, a simple toy maker crafted a puzzle box called the Lament Configuration. A puzzle box that, when solved, will open a portal to hell and call forth its messengers so that they may deliver unto the solver their gift of pain and pleasure of the highest extreme. These messengers, known as Cenobites, are servants of the Order of the Gash, an order of demonic individuals who were once human but partook in the excess of pleasures and pain to the point that the two have become synonymous and now wish to extend their gift to all who seek it. After the horrors of World War I, a British officer named Elliot Spencer had grown pessimistic and sick of the horrors and terrors he'd seen in war and wished to seek the highest levels of pleasure to escape the agony of war and death. Hearing of the Lament Configuration, he traveled to seek it, and upon finding it, solved the box. The box granted his wish, whisking him away to hell and transforming him into the infamous priest of the Cenobites, Pinhead. With scars etched in a grid pattern upon his face and pins jutting out from every intersection therein, his eyes are a pitch black void of malice and soulless hedonism. His skin is pale and cold, and his leather robes mask scars and self-inflicted wounds in his seeking of the furthest reaches of pain and pleasure. As he describes himself, he is... Explorers in the further regions of experience. Demons to some, angels to others. Pinhead has become more than a masochist or a hedonist. He is the face of pain itself. He is the priest of sadism and torture. All Cenobites follow him, and he is their teacher, often speaking on their behalf since many lack the ability to speak themselves. Yet, despite his vicious and cold-hearted persona, Pinhead is not chaotic or maniacal. He possesses a refined and graceful demeanor, walking slowly and straight-backed, and speaking with a polite and sophisticated yet haunting voice. A waste of good suffering. He also does not wildly go seeking victims, but instead is a slave to the Lament Configuration. He pursues those who have solved its secrets and summoned him to them. In this way, only those who seek his personal brand of excess can be taken by him. It is not hands that call us. It is desire. Now it's unclear how, but somehow... The box, the Lament Configuration, has found its way into the Entity's realm. Was it brought in by a survivor? Or perhaps was it purposefully found by the Entity? Who can say? But what is for sure is the Entity intends to take full advantage of this new tool. It won't take long for a curious survivor to come across the box, to bring it back to their campfire, to try and forget their struggles and trials by focusing on a simple puzzle box. And when it's solved, we'll tear your soul apart. Hellraiser was one of the first horror movies I saw that really sent my skin crawling. It's not the scariest I've seen, nor is it my favorite, but there's something about it that unnerved me. Yes, the body horror and masochism is frightening, but more than that is just the nature of Pinhead as a character unfeeling, unyielding, and yet sophisticated. He's not a savage monster and is even able to be bargained with. He can rationalize, feel out an issue, and work to achieve it in creative ways. Pinhead is an individual who does not understand restraint and yet practices it in his actions. 
He seeks the furthest levels of torture and pleasure, and yet only seeks specific targets who ask it for themselves, almost as if he is rewarding them in a very sick way. Now, of the movies, the first and second Hellraiser movies were both fantastic, in my opinion. I didn't like the third one. I never saw the fourth one and have no interest in seeing it. I liked Hellraiser Inferno to a certain extent, and after that, the only other Hellraiser film I saw was Hellraiser Debtor, which was kind of dumb, but it had a cool moment or two in it. You attempted to live beyond death. You entered into my domain. I think what got to me most when watching Hellraiser was the knowledge that Pinhead wasn't like any other killer I'd seen in horror. You see, if Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, Jigsaw, Chucky, or any of the other killers out there got you, you died. But that was it. It's, it's some torture, some pain, sure, some horror, absolutely, but you still in the end died. But Pinhead? No. No, 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 no. His promise is far worse. He's a priest of hell. He doesn't want to kill his victims. He wants them to experience his pleasures, his pains, his excess. He drags his victims with him to his alternate dimension, or hell, whichever you want to go with, so they may spend eternity knowing his type of pain as it tears their soul apart. The horror of knowing death won't be your escape. That there is no end to the damage he can do. And knowing that he's had centuries of practice and experience to know every possible means of torturing his victims. The very concept of that reality sends shivers down my spine. That is why Pinhead resonated with me so well. Because he's not death. He's eternal damnation. He's something not often attributed to horror and that really fascinated and horrified me. Now in Dead by Daylight, Pinhead's powers are a bit complicated. First, at the start of the trial, a chain hunt countdown begins for all survivors. After a certain amount of time has passed, the chain hunt will begin and ethereal chains will appear randomly and begin latching onto survivors. The survivors can free themselves each time they're caught, but doing so slows them down and while latched on, they can't perform other actions or sprint. This allows Pinhead to easily pressure survivors passively in the trial. The only way for survivors to stop a chain hunt countdown or end a chain hunt is to find the lament configuration somewhere in the trial. Doing so and solving it takes some time, but if successful, it will reset the chain hunt countdown. However, Solving the box will give Pinhead a notification and he can teleport himself to the survivor who is solving it, thus ensuring that even in the act of saving themselves, they are damning themselves. Further, if Pinhead finds the box first, he can solve it and immediately activate the chain hunt, while also giving away the auras of the survivors briefly. This means it's not only a race to get the generators done, but also a race against Pinhead to find the box. On top of this, Pinhead has a power called Possess Chain. By holding the power button, Pinhead can summon up a portal somewhere in front of him. How far away the portal is and where it spawns is yours to control. But once activated, Pinhead will stop moving and a chain will burst from the portal that you take first person control of. You can then steer this possessed hook chain at a survivor and try to latch them with it. If successful, multiple chains will burst out of thin air and snare the survivor, slowing them down, preventing sprinting and action for a brief period. I like to use this power if I know a survivor is about to jump a pallet. I summon the chain right as they jump it to try and snare them, or on the other side so I can catch up before they get too far. Or I just don't summon it at all, I pretend to. 
Because if they're trying to pallet loop or they're hiding behind a pallet to drop it on me, it's an easy way to prevent them from dropping it on my head because they'll start running or it'll scare them into dropping it too early and I can get them. <laughs> if used right, Pinhead applies passive pressure in the trial with his chain hunts and can be incredibly brutal in the chase if your aim is good enough with the possessed chains. Also, can we take a moment to appreciate how awesome his animations are? He uses summon chains to break things, open things, and to pick up survivors. How awesome is this guy? Now, his personal perks are just as complicated, but useful in the right hands. Pinhead's personal perks are Deadlock, Hex Plaything, and Scourge Hook Gift of Pain. Deadlock activates when a generator is completed. Upon completion of the generator, the entity will immediately block the next generator with the most progress made on it, and the aura of that generator will appear white. This is a great way to slow down gen progression for the survivors and give you a hint as to where they're hiding or where they've been recently. Now, Hex Plaything is a little tricky, but try to follow me. This does not activate until a survivor is hooked for the first time. Once that happens, a dull totem in the, somewhere in the trial is turned into a hex totem for that plaything. While active, the survivor who is hooked has a bond with that specific hex totem for 90 seconds, making them the only ones who can cleanse it in that time period. Now, while it's active, that survivor is cursed and suffers from the oblivious status effect. Once it's cleansed, the effects are taken away. This perk is situational and requires multiple dull totems in the trial to use effectively, because like I said, the dull totem becoming a hex totem only matches with the plaything you hooked. In other words, you need a total of four dull totems to get all the survivors as playthings. If it can be it can be a boon for you though if you use it right, since the survivors are already feeling the pressure anyway, and this is just another way to apply it. And the last one is Scourge Hook, Gift of Pain. It gives four hooks in the environment to be scourge hooks. When a survivor is hooked upon one of these, if they're pulled off, they suffer from the mangled and hemorrhage status effects. These effects remain until the survivor is healed, but upon healing, they suffer a penalty to healing and repairing speed until they are injured again. Again, this is a good perk to use to slow progression of generators and to add further pressure to the survivors since they know all their action speeds are being reduced by me. Pinhead does not serve the entity. One can only imagine what he must have thought upon being summoned into the entity's realm. However, where the configuration is makes no difference. Who solves it makes even less difference. What matters is that the box is now in a realm where there is no death. Only fear, terror, and misery. A realm where survivors seek release. They seek escape. They'll seek anything. And he can provide it. This Cenobite has come to offer his gift to these weary and weakened survivors. So come, solve the box, and let him show you a world of pain and pleasure you never knew was possible. We have such sights to show you. Thank y'all for joining me in the fog, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.
legendary even in hell. Welcome to hell. <laughs> 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 